فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم The first problem which arose was people believing in certain ideologies and then interpreting the Quran to fit those ideologies. The second problem was a group of people who interpreted the Quran just as an average Arabic speaker would, without considering from whom these words came, to whom it was revealed, and who they were addressing. <coughs> قوم اعتقدوا معاني ثم ارادوا حمل الفاظ القران عليها والثانيه قوم فسروا القران بمجرد ما يسوغ ان يريد ان يريده بكلامه من كان من 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 الناطقين باللغة العرب من غير نظر إلى المتكلم بالقرآن والمنزل عليه والمخاطب والمخاطبه والمخاطب به. Now the Sheikh رحمه الله he's explaining to us Sheikh Al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah the two reasons why there comes a mistake in the deduction. The deduction the two ways that it occurs, um, the, the, the reason why a mistake occurs from. The first one is, إِحْدَاهُمَا The first is, قَوْمٌ A people, اِعْتَقَدُوا مَعَانِيَا They believed in a meaning. ثُمَّ أَرَادُوا حَمْلَ أَلْفَاظِ الْقُرْآنِ عَلَيْهَا And then, they made the wordings follow the meaning. So what did they do? قَدَّمُوا الْمَعْنَى they, pre- they had a preconceived notion, so there's a meaning already there for them. And what they did was They made the wording of the Qur'an تَابِعًا لَهُ Following the meaning that they have in their minds. So where did this meaning come from? They initiated it. They made this up, this meaning. They believed this meaning. Okay? And then they tried to find verses in the Qur'an in support of this. And this is what we say يَعْتَقِدُونَ they believe, they try to look for evidence for it, and they become misguided from that. That's the first group of people. والثانية, the second are These ones, they commented on the Quran. They observed the wordings, they observed the Quran, but... But when they looked at the Qur'an, they looked at it as you would read a textbook. They looked at it from the wordings only. They didn't look at muta'allaqatihi. This is important. Shaykh al-Islam Taymiyyah mentions three muta'allaqatihi. Three muta'allaqat. That are connected to the tafsir. They didn't observe al-mutakallimi bil-Qur'ani. The one who's speaking the Qur'an. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. والمنزل عليه and the one who sent it down Jibreel so they look at the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم who was a nazil به who came down with it and the Prophet was the one who was sent it down on and the third thing they didn't look at is والمخاطب به the people who are being spoken to which were the Arabs so what they did is they took the Quran out of its three متعلقات the three things that it's connected to and this would affect the faham of the Qur'an. It will. It will affect the understanding of the Qur'an. So if a person just says, I'm going to read the Qur'an like I would read an Arabic book. And I would use the wordings based on the Arabic language only. And I won't look at the timing it came down on, the context it came down in, how it came down in. And all of those various factors, if the person takes it out of it, then also uh, there comes a mistake and a shortcoming in... The deduction of the Qur'an. The deduction of the Qur'an. Now, The first group concentrated on meanings that suited them without paying any attention to the real implications and context of the verses. The second group concentrated on the words and how they were used by the Arabs and disregarded the context of the verses. This group also mistakenly interprets words of the Arabic language thinking that their interpretations are linguistically correct. 
The first group also falls into this error, but more so their error is that they are incorrect in the interpretations they give to the meanings of the Quran. The other group is also guilty of this. The first group prefers to concentrate on meanings and the other group places emphasis on words. The first group is further divided into two subgroups, a group which strips the words of the Quran of their real and intended meanings and a group which gives the words meanings which they do not convey. In both instances, that which they wish to affirm or negate may be incorrect and therefore they have erred in both the evidence and the ideology they wish to support with it. Or that particular idea may be incorrect, sorry, may be correct, in which case they have only erred in the way they use the evidences. <laughs> من غير نظر إلى ما تستحقه ألفاظ القرآن من الدلالة والبيان والآخر Al-ma'ana, they observe the meaning. Al-ladhi ra'awhu. But that meaning is the one they saw to be fit. Min ghayri nadarin ila ma tistahiqu al-fadhi al-Qur'ani. Without looking and observing the Qur'an, the rights that it deserves to give the explanation of this verse. They don't observe that. That the verse, according to the Sharia, has a meaning. And it has an understanding by Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. They don't observe that. They don't really care. They've observed the meaning that they set for this word. So they're going to force it to be that meaning. They will make it that meaning. So the first ones, first one, what are they observing? They're observing the meaning that they set for the word. Without looking at the meaning that was given by the Sharia. An explanation that was done by the, by the Sharia. So that's the first of the two. Which were the ones we said they believe. Then they try to look for the evidence for it. And so they become misguided uh, from that. Naam. Wal akhirun ra'u mujarwad mujarwad al lafth wa ma yajuzu indahum an yurida bihi al arabi min ghayri nadar ila ma yasluhu lil mutakallimi bihi wa siyaq al kalam. The second one, they only observe the wording. They didn't care about the meaning. They didn't look at the context that it's in. They just take that word and they look at it the way it is. They look at the word as it is. Not knowing has the Arabs ever used this word in this particular context. And we mentioned this before. The Arabs, have they used the word yet to mean quwa? Naam, they have used it. But have they ever used it in the context of, context of like, قوله um, تعالى, what do you call it? Uh, um, uh, have they used the word yameen, right? Have they ever used it as quwa in the context of how Allah used it in the Quran? وَالسَّمَاوَاتُ مَطْوِيَاتٌ بِيَمِينِهِ Like that. Oh, to be a day I created them. Um, I created him with my two hands. Have the Arabs ever used the yed dual like that in that context? Has it ever come? They don't observe that. All they know is that the Arabs have used yed as quwa and khalas, we found it here. We'll just take it like that. Well, look at the context. The context is different from the context you, you, you knew before. They don't look at the context. And they don't observe the context. The second one, all it is is, has the Arabs ever used this word in this particular way? Naam. Let's use it. Bighaddin Without having any consideration to the context that it has come. Naam. In another context, it would mean that. But in this particular context, will it mean this? No, it wouldn't. Because the Arabs themselves never have used it in this particular, they haven't used it in, in this particular context. Naam. ثم هؤلاء كثيرا ما يغلطون في احتمال اللفظ لذلك المعنى في اللغة كما يغلط في ذلك الذين قبلهم. Now the author says something powerful. Even the ones he's talking about, the ones who observe the wording. He's talking about the second of the two, the ones who observe the wording. The sheikh says ثم هؤلاء these ones, these ones who say we're only going to look at the wordings and the meanings that they find for it. Are you with me? Even them, majority of the times. The wording that they're actually using the meaning for, it actually wasn't even the meaning that's ever used. 
in a language. The same way like those ones who were before them, meaning the first group, the first group, the way that they're also doing mistakes in that. And if I give you an example for this, that they both do, is the Sufiya. They'll say to you, can I ma they see the permissibility of men dancing, and you see them dancing. And so what do they use for that? They, they have evidence from the Quran, as they say, they use Qawluhu Ta'ala, Urkud Birijilika Hada. When Nabi Allah Ayyub alayhi salam was sick, and Allah Ta'ala told him, hit your leg on the ground, hit your leg on the ground, so the water can gush out, they said, Urkud Birijilika, hit your leg on the ground, here means what? It means dance. So they took from that Jawazu al raqs the permissibility of dancing for men. They said it's permissible. Are you with me? Also, the this is another example of the word having no meaning like this in the Arabic language, asalatan. Like the ones who said istawa, istawa means istola. And they tried to make it the Arab, they tried to make this lugha from Aima to Salaf, they denied that existence, the word istawa meaning istola. And they denied that. So there isn't even in the language a usage of the word istawa to mean istola, asalatan. It doesn't exist. And as you should all know, there are actually words in the Quran that the Arabs never knew asalatan in that particular usage. So if you even say, I'm going to observe the Arabic language, you're going to be in a predicament where you're going to see words you've never seen the Arabs be using it like that. Qawluhu ta'ala wa aslihu dhata baynikum. Dhata baynikum, the Arabs never used it in the context of this verse. ثُمَّ الْيَقُضُوا تَفَثَهُمْ وَالْيُوفُوا النُّدُورَهُمْ وَالْيَطَّوَّفُوا بِالْبَيْتِ الْعَتِيقِ ثُمَّ الْيَقُضُوا تَفَثَهُمْ Arabs have never known as to be tafath, the extra filth on the person in hajj to get rid of that, such as your hair and your nails and everything. They, they've never known it is that, that usage. فَلَوْلَا نَفَرَ مِنْ كُلِّ فِرْقَةِ مِنْهُمْ طَائِفَةُ لِيَتَفَقَّهُ فِي الدِّينِ وَلِيُنْذِرُوا قَوْمَهُمْ إِذَا رَجَعُوا إِلَيْهِمْ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَحْذَرُونَ The Arabs never knew the usage of the word فَلَوْلَا نَفَرَ مِنْ كُلِّ فِرْقَةِ مِنْهُمْ طَائِفَةُ لِيَتَفَقَّهُ They didn't use it like that. So what do we have to observe? Pay attention here, brothers. We have to use this powerful point, and this powerful point is very important. The alat of the Arabic, the usage of the Arabic language, are you with me, brothers? is something that we use and it supports us to understand the Qur'an because the Qur'an was sent in the Arabic language. But what we also have to observe is khitab al Is that what is the Sharia known to use this? And how is how do we know the Sharia to be using this particular issue? We have to observe that. Are you with me, brothers? For example, one of the narrators, he says that the hadith, the famous hadith that we're going to touch on later, inshallah ta'ala, is the famous hadith. Where? Um, the sun is going to be brought close the distance of a me meal. Meal. Scholars, the Rawi, he got confused. He said, I don't know, is it, is it the distance of a meal, which is masafa, land? Or the Arabs, they use the kuhul that's put on the eye, is also known as a... So which of those two is it? We now have to do tarjih based on the khitab al -shara. When we look at the Quran and the Sunnah, we've never seen the Quran and the Sunnah ever use the word meal as a kuhul. Whether that is in the Arabic language, that's something else. Like in the Quran and the Sunnah, whenever it spoke about the word meal, it always used it for the masafa distance. So we're going to strengthen it based on that. Which is looking at the Quran, how the Quran speaks, and how the Quran uses this term, and how it's coined this term. Are you with me? And that's one of the other problems that they have. They don't look at the wording based on how the Sharia itself uses it. So the khitab al shara there's a ma'hud yu'lamu that is known by bitatabu ma'anihi fil Qur'an wa sunnah You need to follow the Qur'an and the sunnah in order to come out with that. Naam. Kama anna al-awwaleen kathiran ma yaglatoon fi suhat al-ma'na ala al-lathi fassaru bihi al-Qur'an kama yaglatu fi thalik al-akhirun. Now this is, again, this is the point. We find Two parties, possibilities of the meaning carrying both. And the mistake that is found. So the mistake is in the wording and it's also the mistake in the meaning. The ones who actually think that they got the meaning right, they got it wrong. The ones who think they got the uh, wording uh, right and the meaning, they got it wrong, wrong as well. Naam. <coughs> وَإِنْ كَانَ نَظَرُ الْأَوَّلِينَ إِلَى الْمَعْنَى أَسْبَقْ وَنَظَرُ الْآخِرِينَ إِلَى الْلَفْذِ أَسْبَقْ 
والأولون صنفان تارة يصلبون لفظ القرآن وما دل عليه وأريد به وتارة يح... So here we have two things that the first group have done. The first people, group, what have they done? يسلبون لفظ القرآن وما دل عليه وما أريد به The ones who are um, the first, first of the two. What were they doing? They were stripping from the word the meaning that it showed they strip it from it for example the Mu'tazila what do they do they'll say to you is not seeing Allah are you with me they strip the meaning from what it means that Allah won't be seen and of course what's the reason for that it's a con preconceived notion a belief that's already in their minds and their hearts so they don't want to take it, regardless of when the, whether, whether the verse comes. So the first one is, they change, they change the wording. Are you with me? Have we, ta'ala, the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is what? وَكَلَّمَ اللَّهُ مُوسَى تَكْلِيمًا What did they say? Allah spoke to Musa. What did he say? وَكَلَّمَ اللَّهُ Who spoke? وَكَلَّمَ اللَّهُ مُوسَى تَكْلِيمًا They say, وَكَلَّمَ اللَّهَ they make Allah the maf'ul and they make Musa be the one that spoke to Allah. So they just change the haraka. Why would they do that? They just don't want the meaning to come out from it, which is what? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to Musa. That's a belief they don't want. The second thing that they would do is what? وَتَارَةً يَحْمِلُونَهُ عَلَى مَا لَمْ يَدُلَّ مَا لَمْ يَدُلَّ عَلَيْهِ وَلَمْ يُرَدْ بِهِ now what the, the second thing is that once they strip from the uh, f f strip from it, sometimes what they do is they actually give it a new meaning. They don't just strip the wording, the meaning from it, uh, uh, what it already is, but they give it a brand new meaning. For example, as I said, the Mu'tazila, when they stripped Wujuhun Yamaidin Nadira, what did they say? They gave it a total different meaning, which is what? Yamtadiruna Tawaba Rabbiha. They wait for the reward of their Lord. Are you with me? They wait for a Reward of their Lord, that's what they said. That's what it means. Doesn't mean that people will be seeing Allah the day of judgment. They said it, what it means is that they're going to be waiting for Allah's reward, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now. قَدْ يَكُونُ مَا قَصَدُوا نَفْيَهُ أَوْ إِثْبَاتَهُ مِنَ الْمَعْنَى بَاطِلًا فَيَكُونُ خَطَأُهُمْ فِي الدَّلِيلِ وَالْمَدْلُولِ وَقَدْ يَكُونُ حَقًّا فَيَكُونُ خَطَأُهُمْ فِي الدَّلِيلِ لَا فِي الْمَدْلُولِ So sometimes what happens is they intend to negate or they intend to affirm the meaning which is باطل so their mistake might be in the delil or the madlul. The madlul is the deduction, it's the extraction of the ruling. And the delil is the evidence itself. Naam. And it's even possible for The opposite may be true. So now we finished this chapter. We're now going to move on to the last and final chapter, inshallah ta'ala. فصل في أحسن طرق التفسير فإن قال قائل فما أحسن طرق التفسير فالجواب إن أصح الطرق في ذلك أن يفسر القرآن بالقرآن فما أجمل في مكان فإنه قد فسر في موضع آخر ومختصر في مكان فقد بسط في موضع آخر فإن أعياك ذلك فعليك بالسنة فإنها شارحة للقرآن وموضحة له وإذا لم تجد التفسير في القرآن ولا في السنة رجعت في ذلك إلى أقوال الصحابة ولكن في بعض الأحيان ينقل عنهم ما يحكونه من أقاويل أهل الكتاب التي أباحها رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم حيث قال بلغ عني ولو آية وحدث عن بني إسرائيل ولا حرج ومن كذب علي متعمدا فليتبوأ مقعده من النار رواه البخاري عن عبد الله بن عمرو 
ولكن هذه الأحاديث ولكن هذه الأحاديث الإسرائيلية تذكر تذكر للاستشهاد لا للاعتقاد فإنها على ثلاثة أقسام أحدها ما علمنا صحته مما بأيدينا مما يشهد له بالصدق فذاك صحيح والثاني ما علمنا كذبه بما عندنا مما يخالفه والثالث ما هو مسكوت عنه لا من هذا القبيل ولا من هذا القبيل فلا نؤمن به ولا نكذبه وتجوز حكايته لما تقدم وغالب ذلك مما لا فائدة فيه تعود إلى أمر الديني ولهذا يختلف علماء أهل الكتاب في مثل هذا كثيرا ويأتي عن المفسرين خلاف بسبب ذلك ومما لا فائدة في تعيينه تعود على المكلفين في دنياهم ولا في دينهم ولكن نقل الخلاف عنهم في ذلك جائز إذا لم تجد إذا لم تجد التفسير في القرآن ولا في السنة ولا وجدته عن الصحابة فقد رجع كثير من الأئمة في ذلك إلى أقوال التابعين فتذكر أقوالهم في الآية فيقع في عباراتهم تباين تباين في الألفاظ يحسبها من لا علم عنده عنده اختلافا فيحكيها أقوال وليس كذلك فإن منهم من يعبر عن الشيء بلازمه أو نذيره ومنهم من ينص على الشيء بعينه والكل بمعنى واحد في كثير من الأماكن فليتفطن اللبيب لذلك والله الهادي وقال شعبة بن الحجاج وغيره أقوال التابعين في الفروع ليست حجة فكيف تكون حجة في التفسير يعني أنها لا تكون حجة على غيرهم ممن خالفهم وهذا صحيح أما إذا اجتمعوا على الشيء فلا يرتابوا في كونه حجة فإن اختلفوا فلا يكون قول بعضهم حجة على بعض ولا على من بعضهم ويرجع في ذلك إلى لغة القرآن أو السنة أو, أو عموم لغة العرب أو أقوال الصحابة في ذلك فأما التفسير القرآني بمجرد الرأي فحرام وأما الذي روي عن مجاهد وقتادة وغيرهما من أهل العلم أنهم فسروا القرآن فليس الظن بهم أنهم قالوا في القرآن أو فسروه بغير علم أو من قبل أنفسهم وقد روي عنهم ما يدل على ما قلنا أنهم لم يقولوا من قبل أنفسهم بغير علم ولهذا تحرج جماعة من السلف عن تفسير ما لا علم لهم به فهذه الآثار الصحيحة وما شاكلها عن أئمة السلف محمولة على تحرجهم عن الكلام في التفسير بما لا علم لهم به فأما من تكلم بما يعلم من ذلك لغة وشرعا فلا حرج عليه ولهذا روي عن هؤلاء وغيرهم أقوال في التفسير ولا منافة لأنهم تكلموا فيما علموه وسكتوا عما جاهلوه وهذا هو الواجب على كل أحد فإنه كما يجب السكوت عما لا علم له به فكذلك يجب القول فيما سئل عنه مما يعلمه لقوله تعالى لتبين أنه للناس ولا تكتب لتبين أنه للناس ولا تكتمونه ولما جاء في الحديث المروي من طرق من سئل عن علما فكتمه أنجم يوم القيامة بلجام من نار والله أعلم Chapter Best Method of Tafsir If one were to ask 
what is the best method of tafsir? The response would be that the most authentic of methods is to first explain the Qur'an with the Qur'an. This is because what is mentioned briefly in one place will be expounded upon in another place, and what is summarized in one place will be explained in detail elsewhere. If you are unable to do this, then use the Sunnah as it is an explanation of the Qur'an. Thus, if you do not find the, the tafsir in the Qur'an or Sunnah, you return to the statement of the companions. But sometimes they would transmit from them sayings of the people of the book, which the Prophet wasallam allowed in his statement, convey from me even if it is a verse, and there is no harm in narrating from the children of Israel. But whosoever intentionally ascribes lies to me will take his place in the fire, collected by Al-Bukhari from the hadith of Abdullah ibn Amr. However, these Israelite traditions are quoted as supporting evidences and not primary sources. These traditions are of three types. A type which is authentic as its truthfulness is attested to by our own sources. A type which is false as our own sources reject it. And a third type which does not fall into the previous two categories. We neither judge it to be authentic or inauthentic. As, we, as such, we neither believe, it, believe in it or reject it. One is allowed to quote from this third type, even though most of what is contained in it is of no immediate benefit. The scholars of the people of the book differ considerably regarding this third category, and as a result, the scholars of tafsir quote from them and also differ in this regard, and other such matters which are not detailed in the Qur'an which possess no direct benefit in worldly or religious affairs. However, one may mention the difference of opinion in these matters. If one is unable to find the explanation of a verse in the Qur'an or Sunnah and does not find any relevant commentaries from the companions, then many of the scholars use the statements of the successors. Their statements are quoted and at times there is difference in wording, but those who are not grounded in knowledge believe it to be differences of opinion and quote it as such. This is not the case, as some of them mention something by using examples or similes, whilst others are explicit in what they are referring to, most of the time they are in agreement, so let the state be aware of this, and guidance is from Allah. Shu'ba ibn Hajjaj and others have said that the statements of the successors in matters such as practical rulings, ahkam, are not authoritative, so how can they be, in, how can they be so in issues of tafsir? This means that their opinions are not authoritative over others who hold contrary views. This is true. However, if they all agree on a single issue, then without doubt it is sufficient as evidence. Instead, when they differ, one returns to the language of the Qur'an or Sunnah or the general Arabic language or statements of the companions. Exegesis of the Qur'an based solely on one's reasoning is haram. There are some reports that Mujahid, Qatada and other than them would commentate on the Qur'an, however one does not believe that they spoke of their own desires. There are many narrations from which support the fact that they did not use their own reasoning in the exegesis of the Qur'an. It is for this reason that a number of the Salaf would excuse themselves from interpreting verses they had no knowledge of. These and other authentic narrations from the pious predecessors all state the impermissibility of speaking about tafsir without knowledge. However, there is no harm in speaking about tafsir if one possesses the relevant linguistic and religious knowledge. It is for this reason that there are a number of varying statements reported from these scholars. This does not imply contradiction, for they spoke about matters they had knowledge of and remained silent on that which they had no knowledge of. This is what is obligatory upon everyone, just as one should remain quiet about that which he is ignorant of, likewise he should speak about that which he possesses knowledge of when he is asked concerning it. As Allah says, you must make it clear, i.e. explain it, to the people and not conceal it. This is also due to what is reported in the hadith, whosoever is asked about a matter but conceals it will be given a bridle of fire on the day of judgment and Allah knows best.